Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, I'm going to do another video on metal lathe cutoff. I've done two videos already on it and uh, I don't think I adequately explained it. I think I can do better now. Uh, maybe. We'll see. But anyway, let's get on with it. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> That's a uh, resonance. Based on the length of that rod, uh, shorten it up. Frequency goes up, resonance changes. That resonance needs to be considered in everything you do on a metal lathe, but more so on cutoff. This lathe here has an inch and a half spindle. That spindle flexes. Not very much, but it does flex. When you have a chuck with a specific amount of overhang, that affects the resonant frequency. There's the original chuck for this lathe. It's a good inch and a half shorter, less overhang. This chuck, I can cut off at any speed I want. This chuck, I cannot. There is a very specific speed that this chuck works uh, well for cutoff on. And that's based on that overhang. Okay, every lathe is different. Some have a, a lot more uh, beefed up cross slide and compound. Uh, this is a cutoff and grooving tool. I do not have a typical blade holder cutoff tool. But the same thing applies. If that was a blade holder, this is unsupported. With my compound set at about 30 degrees and a tool post mounted on there, this is largely unsupported. Here's another unsupported area. Right there. It's not supported under here either. Let me go into a little more detail on that because this is important. Okay, what we're looking at here is basically what we're looking at on the metal lathe. That left picture shows an unsupported uh, cutoff blade. The only thing holding it is the two dovetails, the tool post bolt, and the T-nut, and the cutoff blade holder. There's all, every one of them is a possibility for movement. Uh, on the right side there, those two green circles, that's what happens with your dovetails when you've got clearance in your dovetails. If you've got one thousandths clearance on each one of your dovetails, that's going to be more like three thousandths total movement. Uh, there's a lot of mechanical advantage there. Dovetails do not do well when you're lifting on them. Okay, on this next picture, I moved the tool post over. And that supports the tool way better uh, as far as the dovetails are concerned but you still have an unsupported area underneath the cutoff blade itself. This is a top view of that same uh, picture we just looked at. Uh, you'll notice there's an overhang on the front of that cutoff tool and there, that little red area is chuck interference so it's harder to get closer to the chuck. Okay, this picture shows where I moved the compound parallel with the cross slide. This is really ideal for support, but you still have that unsupported area underneath the tool holder itself. Okay, we're looking at the cutoff tool holder I designed. Uh, notice there's no overhang on the front. And it's also supported well on both dovetails. Uh, there's no gap on the bottom of the tool holder, so there's no room for movement. That is a very solid tool. And finally, here's a top view. Uh, notice no overhang, and you can get that blade right up next to the chuck where it needs to be without uh, the compound hitting the chuck, and that's ideal. Hopefully that clarifies how important it is to support your cutoff blade. Uh, 
Let's get on with building the tool and demonstrating it and discuss more about resonant frequencies. Okay, I've got a one inch bar chucked in my lathe and the surface speed calculation works out to about 480 RPM. And that's what I've got the lathe set at. But I've done a little experimenting here and I realized that this is probably not going to work very well. Uh, you'll see what I mean. It's, it'll work, but it's not ideal. So let me show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> That's a lot of chatter. That is due to chuck overhang primarily. Uh, now there's times when you can increase the feed rate and get out of that, or you can slow it down. So I'm going to slow it down and show, show you how much better it does. Okay, now I'm running uh, 180 RPM. Now you'll hear a little bit of chatter, but it'll be way better. Slower is not necessarily better, but it's uh, we're dealing with resonant frequencies, so <clears throat> depending on the chuck overhang, the spindle diameter, or what have you, uh, you got to find the right combination of feed and speed. Now you hear a little bit of chatter, but that's not bad. Kind of a little bit of a whining noise when I first started there. Unless you're in a big hurry, this works great. With that resonant frequency coming in there. Or chatter. I always use plenty of oil doing cutoff. There we go. That's a smooth cutoff, or basically. Let's try a slightly faster feed rate, see what happens. It may stop my light, I don't know. See, there's a little more heat involved there. <clears throat> okay, let's try higher RPM like I would do with my smaller chuck in, at an increased feed rate. I got a feeling it's going to stall my lathe. Uh, with a more powerful lathe, it, it might work great. Uh, let's see what happens. That wasn't too bad. A little more smoking going on. Okay. A little bit higher feed rate yet. Let's see what happens. Maybe we'll get out of that resonance. It worked okay. I think that's pushing things a little bit. One thing about cutting off slower, you don't sling oil everywhere. Let's put the other chuck on and we'll try uh, this same RPM and see how much resonance we get. Okay, same RPM, different chuck. Less overhang.
Not bad. The reason, uh, one of the reasons I made this video again is because you can't get these shallow chucks anymore. If they were readily available, I'd recommend getting them and because and, uh, they're a lot more solid and they're good for cutoff. Uh, but the aftermarket chucks that are available now are much deeper and uh, you just have to play with RPM and uh, control your resonance. Okay, I got the lathe slowed down and the other chuck put back on. I think I prefer this. There's a whole lot less oil slinging everywhere. Takes a little longer. Doesn't chatter too bad. Well, I like it. I was going to redo the uh, blade holder, tool holder video, but I think uh, I'm just going to put a link under, underneath this video to the original video where I built this tool holder. Uh, it was a pretty good video. Uh, it also has a link to this type of blade I'm using in here, which is exceptional. Uh, anyway, that about wraps it up, and thanks for joining me, and be sure and subscribe.